Hello, wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful people. How are you? Today I'm talking about asylum seekers. I'm talking about people coming into the country to escape things or coming into the country to get things. I'll tell you all about it on the other side. When I lived in the UK, uh, the few years before we moved to Spain, I had this beautiful job of teaching English to people who would come to the UK to escape war-torn countries, etc. And I taught people from Syria, people from the Czech Republic, people from Yemen, all over the place. Loads and loads of people. And over the time, you know, I, I met some beautiful people, absolutely beautiful people. They weren't all running away from something bad because some of them were in the European Union. They were just coming to the UK. And so they were offered English so that they could actually start to uh, integrate with the community. It was a beautiful job. I loved it until, until they started making the paperwork so horrible that it was just not any fun anymore. However, I met some really beautiful people and I heard some absolutely fascinating and jaw-dropping stories about how they'd actually come to the UK. So, for example, most of them had paid. The ones who had come from countries outside of the European Union had paid somebody. And the figures that I heard were between £3,000 and £6,000 to come to the UK. And how, were the, how was it done? in various ways, but the most common one was where the person who organized them to come would travel with them on a plane from their country to um, not the new UK, where the plane would do a stop off and get refueled. But the people, not everybody got off. And what would happen is the plane would land, the person who was taking them would take the passports off them and get off the plane. And then they would then continue to the UK. And when they got to the UK, they would say, we haven't got any passports, we're here as asylum seekers. And so then they would be taken into the system. That happened a lot. Most of them were families. Most of them were men who were coming with the wives and children. Sometimes it was just men, but not always. Nearly always they came with a family. I remember one lesson where we were talking about the countries in Europe. And I and, and basically it was all, you know, where the Mediterranean Sea is, all of the countries that, that covered the Mediterranean Sea. And I said, how many people um, have been to Greece? This one man put his hand up. How many people have been to Italy? This man put his hand up. How many people have been to Spain? Put this hand up. I was thinking, that's really strange, isn't it? He's been to all these countries. And I said, how have you been to so many? He was from Syria, by the way. How, how have you been to so many countries? And he said, because I walked from Syria to the UK. And I was like, excuse me, tell me how that worked. He said, I walked. I didn't have the money to pay anybody to get me there. So I decided I was gonna walk. So he walked and he walked through every country. And what he said was, three times he walked into Greece and he was thrown out of Greece and sent back to some other, not to, not to Syria, but to another country. Three times until finally he managed to walk through Greece and came and, he, and then he got to, the, uh, to France and got the ferry over, okay? Incredible, incredible story. And he was a lovely man and he was so quiet. So absolutely quiet. That, to me, is what I would call somebody who deserves. When I, when I thought, heard that he'd walked from Syria to the UK, my thought was, well, bloody hell, welcome to the UK. You deserve to be here because anybody who's willing to walk, I can't remember how many thousands of miles he told me he'd walk, but a lot. So I had only, very rarely did I meet somebody who I didn't like, who just wasn't nice. 
there was some interaction between class members if they were from countries of opposing, you know, factions. But generally, they were lovely people. Fast forward to today, and I'm going to give you an analogy. Can you remember? I'll give you two. Can you remember a long time ago when the Irish people would go to London to seek their fortune and they were told that the streets were paved with gold? Can you remember that? We still talk about it. It's like used as a metaphor. He thinks the streets are paved with gold. And they came and they had the shock of their lives because it wasn't true. They've been sold a lie. So the second analogy I'd give you is this. This man has a rabid dog that is just going wild. And knowing that it's rabid, he takes the rabid dog to a playground and sets it free. And the rabid dog bites some children. Okay, imagine that scenario. Horrible, we don't, it's not, it's just an analogy, okay? It's not true. And what do the people do? The people blame the dog. And they want the dog put down which inevitably it was. But they didn't turn and face the person who brought the dog to the park, knowing the potential. 